Hey, what's up guys? It's Rick with the Digital Divide. Today we're going to be taking a look at the original Xbox. This was Microsoft's first foray into the gaming console market. It was released on November the 15th in 2001 in the United States. Speaking of the United States, the Xbox was the first console offered by an American company after the Atari Jaguar stopped sales of its console in 1996. I think the two men primarily responsible for creating the Xbox console was Seamus Blackleaf and Ed Fries. They wanted to capitalize on the success that they saw Nintendo and Sony have, and they realized at some point that the gaming space is a multi-trillion dollar industry, and they wanted a part of that. But trying to convince Bill Gates was not easy. Uh, he was notoriously against the idea when he first heard about it, as you can hear from this interview. So uh, we go into the meeting, and um, four o'clock, Valentine's Day, Bill walks in, he's holding our deck, PowerPoint deck, throws it down the table and he says, this is a blanking insult to everything I've done at this company, basically was the quote. <laughs> that was the start of the meeting. <laughs> Eventually they were able to talk Bill Gates into greenlighting the Xbox project. The Xbox got its name through DirectX, which was Microsoft's graphical API at the time. It was originally called the Direct Xbox and then later changed to just Xbox to shorten it. We're unveiling the Xbox. Uh, this is the product that will be out uh, later this year, uh, and there's an amazing amount going on. Uh, working with uh, partners who help build the hardware, working with the software developers, working with the retailers. The program around this thing is really quite phenomenal. But the box itself uh, is another thing that we put a lot of energy into. So you may have been wondering what this great device was here. Uh, this is the Xbox, and so, uh, for the first time, let me now unveil Xbox. Now, compared to its closest competition, the PlayStation 2, the Xbox was an absolute beast of a system. It had a custom NVIDIA GPU, it had an IBM CPU clocked at 733 megahertz, it could process more than one trillion instructions per second, it had double the amount of system memories the PlayStation 2 supported higher resolutions, it was also one of the first consoles to support programmable vertex and pixel shaders. Games like Splinter Cell, for example, took advantage of those programmable shaders specifically for its shadow rendering, which was really impressive at the time. The Chronicles of Riddick was another standout title that looked absolutely gorgeous and simply was not possible on the PlayStation 2 hardware. Games like Crimson Skies also supported the programmable shaders for its water rendering, which was super impressive at the time, and I think still is today. Now, the Xbox notoriously came with a gigantic controller that was nicknamed the Duke. It was humongous, and for me, I, I loved it. I thought it was great, I felt comfortable, but for a lot of people, it was just way too big. And actually putting the control in their hands, we tried out over 100 different form factors, you know, to find what was the most comfortable and would give them the best game, game play. Microsoft would eventually reverse course and create a new controller. This was originally designed for the Japanese demographic, but they ended up rolling it out to all territories, and it became the standard that all of their future controllers are now based off of. Now, you can actually still buy these officially licensed ginormous fat Duke controllers for the PC on Amazon here, and the, the coolest thing about them is if you click on the center button, it actually has uh, a, an LED screen that, that shows the original Xbox logo, which is just so cool. So the system launched with an impressive 19 games. Some of the standouts, I think, were Project Gotham Racing, Dead or Alive 3 was a standout, I thought that Munch's Odyssey, Oddworld, was a really good title, but the biggest title, without a doubt, has got to be Halo Combat Evolved. Without this game, they would not be on the map today. A lot of people don't know this was never supposed to be a Microsoft exclusive. It was supposed to launch on the Apple system and was actually first unveiled at Macworld. We are starting to see some great games come back to the map, but this is one of the coolest I've ever seen. This game is going to ship early next year from Bungie, and this is the first time anybody has ever seen it. It's the first time they've debuted it. And so I'm very happy to uh, welcome on the stage Jason Jones, who is the co-founder of Bungie 
and the Halo Project lead. Halo is the name of this game. And we're going to see, for the first time, Halo. Welcome, Jason. Thanks, Steve. Yep. Everything you're about to see is being rendered in real time on a Macintosh using OpenGL. So the Xbox was a very innovative system. So many firsts. It was the first console to come with a built-in hard drive, which meant no memory cards were necessary. The PlayStation would eventually release an external optional hard drive for the PlayStation 2, but if I'm not mistaken, only one game supported it and it didn't come with a console. It was also the first mainstream console to come with four controller ports. The standard up until that point was just two, and then you had to pay if you wanted additional controller ports with an extension. It was also the first console to support high-definition TVs and high-definition resolutions. Uh, it also came with a built-in 100 megabit Ethernet port, which was optional on consoles like the PlayStation 2 and Dreamcast, where you could buy extensions, but they were not standard. It also supported uh, DVDs and other multimedia, although unlike the PlayStation 2, you did need to buy a separate DVD movie playback kit in order to utilize this. So the original Xbox is also where Xbox Live was created, and I can't under I, I can't understate how important this service is because without this service, modern standards such as a friends list, for example, or a group chat, or any of those features would not exist. Albeit some of the early commercials were fairly cheesy for this service. I am now loading a claims revolt. I will soon experience complete oneness with an interconnected global community of game warriors. I can feel the energy flowing through the high-speed Ethernet cables. Dude, who are you talking to? Are, are we gonna play or what? Patience, Grasshopper. One must learn before one can dominate. Forget that, let's play! Are you ready, Grasshopper? I was born ready. My name is Chuck. You cool? Dumb master? You see, we're already signed up. It was way easy, just took a couple of minutes and we're good to go. Once you've signed up, you never have to do it again. Plus, you get to pick your gamer tag. You know, your online identity. Mine's a dark master. I play every game as Dark Master, and uh, people are starting to recognize who I am. Oh no, not Dark Blister. Yep, I'm getting kind of a reputation for my superior skill. So around this time, the Sega Dreamcast died, and Sega stopped manufacturing hardware and started solely producing software as a third-party software development house. And they threw all their weight behind the Xbox to the point where it was almost like a spiritual successor to the Dreamcast.
Have fun. Thanks. Stay tuned. Welcome, welcome. Excuse me. How can I get to Wan's eye? Wan's eye? Go out the gate and turn right. Now, guys, I want to leave you with some must-play games. I try to do this whenever I do a retrospective. I'm going to give you five must-play games on the Xbox. Uh, number one on the list is Ninja Gaiden. This game is incredible. It runs at a silky smooth frame rate and is so much fun to play. The second one was maybe my favorite RPG of all time. It is Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Number three is also a game made by Bioware, Jade Empire. It is a more action-oriented RPG, but it is absolutely amazing. Another one on the list is Panzer's Dragoon Orta. This is the sequel to one of my favorite series on the Sega Saturn. And then lastly, we have another RPG with Fable. And this game is incredible, and I can't wait for the new one that they are currently working on. So guys, that's going to do it for me today. As always, I appreciate you watching, and have a great night.